Okay, great. So good morning or good afternoon. Um, this is the House Transportation Committee. It's Tuesday, April 16th. And um, this afternoon, we are focusing on uh, Senate Bill 184, which is an act relating to the temporary use of automated traffic law enforcement ATM systems with um, our attorney, uh, Ben Novogrosky. Um, and I, we, we have a new draft of the bill. So Ben, why don't I just turn it over to you? Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. For the record, Ben Novogrosky from the Office of Legislative Council. Um, there is draft 1.2 of the strike all amendment to S184 before the committee. Um, it is almost completely unchanged from the last version, except it reflects the conversation that I had with Judge Sona yesterday about the preponderance of the evidence standard that we were discussing. So if you look on the, um, at the, on the screen, it wasn't so much that the state had the burden to prove preponderance of the evidence because, and to correct my prior testimony, Judicial Bureau proceedings are all um, a clear and convincing standard that the state must prove. So in between the civil preponderance standard and the criminal reasonable, beyond a reasonable doubt standard. Um, but through our discussions, uh, you know, there's this language that um, in subdivision two here that notwithstanding the owner's failure to request a hearing, a Vermont civil violation complaint issued pursuant to this section shall be dismissed with prejudice. That's another change instead of without consequence it's a more accurate legal term. Um, so what it means is that it's dismissed, it can't be brought again, there's no, there's no consequence either. Um, and then, but upon a showing by the owner and the question that he raises, well, what is that showing? And so that's where the preponderance of the evidence language comes in is that um, the owner must show by preponderance of the evidence that the motor vehicle in question was not in the care, custody, or control of the owner of the time at the time of the violation because the owner was in military service. So it clarifies what the burden is on the um, on the person at that time. So this is on page, uh, I believe, sixteen. Yeah, so. Page ten. Yes. Okay. Good morning. Questions about. I appreciate that you reached out to the zoning directly to help sort rather than us translating back to you. <laughs> okay, I already had a meeting set up with him, so it was I can't take the credit necessarily for doing that, but I used it as an opportunity to pick his brain a little bit. Yeah, that was my that, that was your that question. That had been my so. doubt, and I had written that that's what he had said to do, and so I'm glad to know that I listened <laughs> that day. Yeah, thank you. So. So do you want to go, would it make sense, Ben, to go from the top of the bill? Like there's some highlighted changes. Well, th those are highlights are just from, from before. And I know that some have been highlights of changes. Others were highlighted for points of discussion. So okay. I'm happy to do, um, to follow the wishes of the committee. I think it just might help us just to go from, starting from page one, just start sure. reading, we can kind of go through it. And then I know that we do have, a, we have some questions Probably as we go along, I think there was one flag about looking at language that our vice chair had flagged about um, areas where um, it's the collaboration between the Agency of Transportation and the Department of Public Safety. We just wanted to go through and make sure, because I think it's our understanding that the Agency of Transportation would be taking the lead, and we just wanted to clarify that. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So maybe as we go through, we can just make those. Um, Absolutely. Like, then maybe if, if changes are needed, we can do that. Um, um, so section one is uh, the purpose section that was added in uh, draft 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, no changes between now and then. Uh, newly designated section 1A um, is the bulk of the bill. Um, adds the two definitions of the ATLE system uh, calibration laboratory, but otherwise the definitions remain the same. We I did highlight the law enforcement officer definition that we addressed last time. Um, that remains unchanged from draft 1.1. 1 .1. I think the committee was okay with that. So we we talked about this and and I think that was um we can we can sign off on it. Okay, I will just making it a little note would that be the correct term. Oh, you can do it in real time. This is so okay. <laughs> um, and then scrolling through again, those definitions remain remain the same. 
Um, and then 1606 is the ATLE system for speeding outlines um, its use, which is to improve. Um, we are now on page four. So all this remains unchanged. Um, you know, speaking of focusing on AOT language, the deployment of ATLE is on behalf of AOT by a third party. Um, and that's how it's been since I've at least taken over the bill. So, okay. I don't know. I had a question mark about confirms. And like, is that page five? Yes. We haven't gotten there yet. You don't see confirms. We're not there yet, I don't think, but that isn't as, that isn't as, oh, we're, yeah. Well, so, we're on 1.2. Oh. I'm sorry. Well, I'm on the wrong page, though. Where are you? I'm on page four. Oh, you're, you're ahead of us. You're just ahead of us. That's good. Yes. Yeah. But I think that's coming up next. So, yeah, and uh, there have been no changes to this portion. Um, and I do, I had highlighted that specific provision about the agency confirming or not. It was a point right. of discussion that was raised. Question mark that somebody questions confirming the use of the word confirms. Agency confirms. I don't know if it was me or somebody else. Remember what that? I know we highlighted this, but was there was also the issue about I think the site plan or safety yeah. plan exactly. um, instead of I think traffic engineering analysis. So this was something that we were. I have a note that we need to cross check it with AOT. So maybe yeah. just let's keep it. Um, I was. I anticipated someone from the agency is going to be in the committee room with us. So why don't we just keep this flagged and keep it highlighted? Um, we just want to make sure that it's consistent. I think Rep Pouch also had flagged it, right? Yeah. Am, I, am I mistaken? Yeah. Do I remember that right? Well, it was brought up that they don't really do a traffic engineering analysis. They call it something else, the site plan or something. Mm -hmm. so we just need to make sure that the, the, the language here aligns with kind of AOT language about because I think we, I think the committee is on board with the concept, right? But I think we just want to make sure that the language, yeah. Okay. Scrolling back down, it's more sort of about the system, mm -hmm. the lead up to when you're entering the zones and the notifications when you're entering and exiting. Um, then scrolling on to page six, this concerns the daily log. So um, the defender that the vendor that the defender um, the vendor that deploys the system must maintain a daily log. Um, the committee uh, tweaked this a little bit last time, which now incorporates a demonstration that the equipment is operating properly um, and a verification that the signage and equipment placement needs uh, placement meets site plan requirements. I think Rep Shaw has a question. And the word site plan is not very transportation oriented. Well, I think that was something that was also, I think, AOT input was desired on that yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's sort of the same. Right. It's just sort of the same thing. So yeah. if they have a whatever it is, mm -hmm. I'll call it site plan for lack of anything else, um, that they confirm that it that it's all done. Then here you'd want to confirm that those signs no, are like where that, they need to belong. Just yeah. not very. Transportation related right. term. Site plan is more building. Mm -hmm. but I, and I don't know if it makes all that much difference. But. Um, and that's something that I can either reach out to AOT myself or if the committee wants to get testimony from them on the record. Yeah, they, they call their plans of traffic control plans. So. Is that something that the committee would be yeah, I just, change yeah. now? I just okay. to check. I, I just. Um, I was anticipating that someone from the agency would be here with us while we we're doing this to do that. I thought that was my understanding, but I'm going to flag both of these things and maybe um, if they don't come in, then we might have to you know, check in with them. Sure. How that Happy to do that. Um, and again, you know, just the, the information that needs to be associated with these logs. Um, the daily log is retained for a period of um, at least three years by the agency and is admissible in any proceeding uh, for a violation involving the ATLE system. Uh, 
in subsection E, uh, the word independent was added to the calibration laboratory for their annual calibration. Um, and then we're getting into subsection F, which um, goes on to page seven, which is the penalties, where zero for the first violation, then uh, bumps up to 80. However, you need to receive notice of the first in order to get the second of the vi uh, second violation, and then 160 for third or subsequent within 12 months. Um, and again, the owner of the vehicle bearing the re registration number plate um, is not deemed to have committed a crime or a moving violation unless otherwise convicted pursuant to uh, other law. Just a, a clarification. Um, this, this, my understanding, or I guess I could be wrong, is that fines are doubled as in the statute currently, right? Um, I'd have to double check that. Um, Assuming that's true, how come we're not making reference to that statute saying, notwithstanding, this is what you're going to get fined? So, yeah, and I can, I can confirm that if that is in statute and that fines are doubled. Um, that might very well be proper to do is to not withstand that provision of law yeah, and make sure there's no, there's no conflict. Yeah. I'm have a question. Um, other questions, Representative Parks? Yes, thank you. In that uh, section two, it says, um, you know, the owners hadn't committed a crime or moving violation. Is that be Yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused. Is that like before it's a ticket or even after getting the ticket, it's not considered that? Well, it would just be that this a proceeding under this provision would not be considered that. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. It's only if it would be in conjunction with another, another crime that they're prosecuted for, like reckless driving, which is a criminal, criminal, um, criminal offense, you know, if you are well in excess of the speed limit. That answer your question? Yeah. Are you sure? But when you say that we have, we have a moment if you want to ask yeah. further questions. More than a moment. So is it because just getting your play captured and your, your image recorded, that's not you know, you're you're not killed. Correct. You need but to go through you, the proceeding. You have to go through the proceeding. Yes. Okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Any other, other questions? I think. I mean, one of the things, and this might not be the time to have it, but I think what your the question that Rapunzel asked <clears throat> kind of touches up about you know the you know the data coming in in the storage, because it would be, mm -hmm. I, I, and that might be a little bit later in the bill, but I think we probably need some committee time to hear, to really do the, make sure the committee understands um, how that works, but also just what the statute says, what's allowable and you know, who, who has access to that info. So I don't know if it's here, but it kind of starts to- We're getting there, yeah, yeah, the, the so, retention and preservation. Yes, yeah. yeah, I think it's, so I'll hold off on that until we get there. Other questions about the penalties here? See any? Moving on, then we're getting into the notice and complaint. So this outlines how the procedure goes. Um, initiated by issuing a civil violation complaint to the owner. It must include that recorded image that's captured by the system um, and mailed by US mail. It must, uh, like, Complaint must include or be based on inspection of the recorded images and data produced by the systems. Um, it must be sworn, issued, sworn, and affirmed by a law enforcement officer who personally inspected the images and data. Um, it must enclose those recorded images um, and at least one of uh, showing the rear registration number. Um, must have the date, time, and place of the violation, and then any applicable civil penal penalty amount that and the dates, times, and places of any prior violation. So that's, uh, Representative Pouch, as far as your question about when we talk about penalties, depending on which violation they're at, that information would be provided um, at the initial complaint that the person receives. 
Um, and then finally include a written verification that it was operating correctly at the time of the violation and the date of most recent inspection. And that also must now contain language, a notice of language access services in accordance with federal and state law. Um, and then also include the affidavit that the issuing officer has determined the owner's military status uh, to the best of their ability. Any well, questions on what's included in the complaint? I think that was a, uh, so that was just G. You scroll up, uh, I that, was new light. that was, that was Jay Green. Like that, that kind of reflects what that is. So I think that can probably, the, I think that's pretty straightforward. The committee and I'm with that. Go ahead and represent Yeah, no, that. I guess my only, but I didn't realize that we have state law or, that, or whether we're doing this out of um, a, a, whether this is an advisory piece that the Office of Social Equity gave us, or whether there is, do we have anything in our state law? That so there are federal that? laws that do it. Um, I think the sort of um, the state law would just be that if anything exists, it also complies with that. I do know DPS and the courts have directives that provide these services. Um, and so this would, there's not an applicable state law right now. That's okay, because but if it ever were to come um, online, if you will, if the law were ever passed that did mandate this, it would already be covered. Just curious. Yeah. Like, why are we referring to a law that may not exist? Seems well, it's federal law, though. No, it's yeah. I mean, I, I I did federal and state. Um, kind of short circuiting the fact that you know. Yeah. And this not to go down the rabbit hole of research. Yeah, and I guess this is this is like for a court a court summons or whatever. Like, and this is about the judiciary system as opposed to like the outreach efforts that we'll talk about. Right. So there there is a separate provision for that. Um, the courts, like when you walk into a court, the courts are by their own directives required to provide translators to you if you need them. This would just be in the notice and complaint that there would be information to obtain language services um, and directing you to. Or to get that information. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Representative Burke? Um, to do this, but um, if, uh, is there a time limit? Like, say you get a notice of a second infraction. Mm -hmm. um, is there a time limit by which you need to pay the fine? There, there is a time limit. If you don't respond, um, I cannot recall the time limit off the top of my head, but basically, yes, there is. Um, if you don't respond in, in a certain amount of time, you'll have the default judgment entered against you. I'm just thinking about, you know, A, you know, people who lost their mail during the flooding. Mm -hmm. and, um, some people I know are not getting their mail regularly. Right, right. The mail delivery system is not as reliable. Yeah, and, you know, the law does, um, you know, as far as civil procedure does account for that, where... Um, if there is a, a default judgment entered against you for some extenuating circumstance, you can make a motion to have the default judgment set aside because of that, uh, because you didn't get notice. So there is a, a process for it. Um, and uh, yeah, if that answers your question sufficiently. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Representative Burke, you and alongside that, I mean, there's also earlier just above like that, the, there are 30 days after the date. I mean, there's a built in time before another um, can be issued. Can, if violation can be issued. Yeah. And I do know that there are response times outside of that for the to cover the situation you're referring to. Hi. Um. And then here again, complaint mailed within 30 days to the address and notice violation shall be mailed not more than 30 days after the date of the violation. One that is mailed 30 days um, afterwards is void. And that was the new language that was that was added to mirror the outside of Vermont language, which is 90 days. Is that something that maybe we remove the highlights on as well? I think so. I'm just going to say from the committee that's we. This was something that we asked him to do. So it came from Judge Zone recommendation. So I think we can, okay, look around the table. Section, subsection <clears throat> H, excuse me, uh, outlines the defenses to a violation. 
um, that one, uh, that the motor vehicle or license plate shown in the recorded uh, images were under the care custody control of someone else at the time of the violation, um, that or that the radar component of the ATLE system was not properly calibrated or tested at the time of the And then we're getting into the proceedings before the Judicial Bureau, which I highlighted earlier. Um, this remains the same with the exception of that preponderance of the evidence standard um, inserted uh, for the showing that the driver would need to make that they were in the military, and that's why they were not in control of the vehicle at the time. Or some other piece, too, besides that. Uh, yes. Well, this one is specific to, to um, okay. mili military okay. service. Yeah. But the um, the defense that you're referring to is, is covered in subsection H. I think we discussed, I think this has to be the highlights can be tier two. And the reason why this is a separate provision is because military service people are treated differently in this context. Um, and so that's why the showing would need to be made. So, for example, I think we heard testimony that <clears throat> if, if there were an officer pulling someone over or issuing a ticket, there's, like the, there's like a box to check, right? Military the service, service. Military service. So this language kind of does what that checking of the box would do. Now we're getting into retention under subsection J. Um, so essentially all recorded images are retained according to subdivision two, which states that they shall only be retained for 12 months after the date it was obtained or until resolution of the violation and the appeal period if the violation is contested. When the retention period has expired, the vendor and law enforcement agency or custody of the image shall destroy it and cause it to have destroyed any copies or backups made of the original image. Uh, any, any questions about the initial retention policy? So 12 months or the length of the adjudication, basically, appeal or the initial. Because if you get the notice of violation, pay the fine at that time, it's only been a couple, couple months still. That image goes away? Um, well, at least for, for 10 months. They would be 10 months more. So let's say that that all occurs in within two months. Um, the, they would still retain it for another 10 months and then destroy it. It says it was obtained for until the resolution of the applicable violation chief. Yeah, I guess that would resolve it. So yeah, I stand corrected. Thank you, Representative Shaw. <laughs> so it's okay, like, like with that Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it covers both scenarios. I hate it when we get nitpicked. You no, know, no, it just it's. Um, I feel like my capacity is diminished these days. Yeah. <laughs> um, I might be available. So, <laughs> thank you. If you want any time, feel free to step in. Where was he just reading? Page um, ten. Page yeah, the bottom, page ten. So is it clear enough about who's retaining the data in this section? Is it is it, is it clear enough in the language of the bill? So it's retained by the vendor. It's retained by the vendor. Mm -hmm. And then and then the vendor and the law enforcement agency that initially had recorded the images are both um, both deleted. So do we have do we have and, and so who is retaining the, the image for 12 months? Is it both the vendor and like well, it, right now it's only explicitly stated that the vendor does it. Um, so it doesn't explicitly say one way or the other if somebody else is retaining the image. Um, as far as disposal, it's um, it's explicit that it's law enforcement or the vendor that needs to dispose of the image after resolution or twelve months has passed. Um, I guess it's a it's a policy decision for the committee if. You want to make it more explicit if you want the law enforcement agency to also retain the images. Um, I, I guess part of it is my lack of, you know, kind of gaining, a, you know, some of the, the, the staff laws that we passed around. Um, I would say ALPR, mm -hmm. license plate reader, and ATLE. I just want to make sure that, like that, that that we we were very intentional and in kind of being narrow about how this data is used, you know, and and where it's retained. 
So is this link, like, is the vendor then um, held to that same, the, the same standard? The, the vendor is, yeah, because yeah. the vendor is covered in both the mandate to retain and the mandate to, to delete or destroy. Okay, because in the past, like, it's really, we heard in testimony that there have been some limited cases where like law enforcement had been using the technology. Now it's not really being used by right. law enforcement in Vermont. So I just wanted to make sure that we are like really clear about who's. Yeah, my understanding and my read of it is that they, they do mirror each other. Um, and, and also with the retention schedule here, um, there's no mandate that the law enforcement agency retain it itself. So it, that could, it could be argued that that does keep it narrow. Um, but if they do so happen to have the image, they are required to destroy it within 12 months or until resolution of the case. So no requirement to keep, but requirement to destroy. I see a question. I think that answers my question about data storage. Um, Representative Bartholomew? So what's resolution of the case? Resolution of the case could be payment of a fine. It could be, they see it all the way through to a bench trial and the person is held not guilty, or if the or if they appeal, the if they're found guilty and they still want to appeal it, then resolution of the appeal. Well, that's what I thought it would mean. But then, how does that apply to the fine structure, where within twelve months, subsequent violations, if does it have to be retained to for those subsequent violations within twelve months? Well, those would just be the images, not necessarily the record of the violation. This is the talking about recorded image shall be retained. Right, the recorded image is. Um, so the records, but the records of, of the previous violations would still be there for the year. Right, like it's still this on. Is, this is not tied to, to that fine thing. Right, this is just about the rec retention of the recorded images themselves. Yeah. And just to put a fine point on it, there are records that then the court like will will retain, and that's separate. That's yes. separate from it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to sort of clarify that because, you know, if it's been more than a year or, or less than a year, the decision as to whether it becomes a fine or not based on this, I would assume the uh, Department of Public Safety, when they go to do that, they would have a record that, mm -hmm. you know, hey, we got a ticket three months ago for this, right. or it's 15, 18 months, and therefore, here's what this potential ticket might be. Yeah. That that's my understanding as well. Like the, you know, they 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 keep records of their interactions, you know, and, and, and the reports or whatever that they have to do. But the the real retention is about making sure that the the images that are captured are not disseminated. Any other questions on this representative Walker? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, sorry I missed some of the pieces, but when the third party vendor testified or one of the potential third party vendor that it's more than just images, potentially it's like a video that zooms in that's the image of the piece, right? So there's potentially more to it. And then, so the idea of that vehicle, proving that that vehicle is in a certain spot for a year long, something happens in that particular work zone and or something with a particular vehicle happens. Is the record of that vehicle being in that place then subpoenable and usable in any other incident that did occur in that zone or in any other uh, incident that uh, to proof of where that vehicle had been. Well, is that data available in some way to any other event of the uh, law event that happens? In effect, that there's a record and proof of where I was for 12 months. Well, that would be, I think, if it's kind of related to another ongoing investigation right. or case. That is, I think, outlined in the definitions about legitimate law enforcement purpose. It would have to be for the investigation of a crime or a commercial motor vehicle violation. Uh, outside of that. It could not be used. It couldn't be subpoenaed by some other piece or case that would pull data of everything that occurred in that particular area for 12 months to be able to prove who was in and out of an area in 12 months. I mean, if it was pursuant to a legitimate investigation, well, if crime, it was yeah. some other like, so that's it's divorce. Well, well I, I don't know. Well, that wouldn't be a crime. Say, well, yeah. okay. no, but I, my point. I just yeah. want to understand that the idea that some defense attorney somewhere in the worst case scenario could through subpoena get access to everybody that was in a particular area. Yeah. For 12 months. Um, every vehicle that was in that area or every license plate or something. I'm just talking about sort of the idea that there is data about record of where X vehicles went that's available for 12 months. 
that will prove or not prove in some other case that where people were at a certain time and place is now available for 12 months. Yeah, no, there there has to be a very good reason to do it. A suit for order. Right. And like and so for instance, let's say if um there was someone was prosecuted for a crime, the defense attorney, there is discovery, there's stuff that has to be handed over. I mean, that is information that could be part of that case if it was somehow relevant to the ongoing crime. Um, but again, it would have to be related to the investigation, detection, prosecution of that crime. The defense it, of something that happened. It could be somebody's defense of something that had been investigated. What about from the defense side of somebody that, you know? Well, and that's, it, and that's what I'm saying is that, you know, if it's an ongoing thing, it can't be it would have to be a legitimate law enforcement purpose. And, let, and maybe it's worthwhile just kind of going back up to that definition so that everyone can see. Um, page three. So yeah, page three, it's subdivision seven, applies to access to active or historical data and means investigation detectives, detection analysis or enforcement of a crime or of a commercial motor vehicle violation or a person's defense against a charge of a crime Absolutely. or commercial. So yes, it's to their defense as well. Um, but it wouldn't just be like if they're using your example um, of a divorce proceeding, it could not be used in a divorce proceeding because it's not a crime. If there were a major, an accident in that work zone and or something that occurred within that geographical area that wanted to prove every vehicle that had gone through a particular area, they could gather that. If they were defending against some crime that occurred in that area, they certainly would be open to sue to get a, it's, access to the data, which goes further to the idea. It's not just the image of the license plate, it's some video of what occurred as they traveled into that was what the I just have a point of clarification. My understanding and in, in, is that an image is only taken if you're if you're speeding, and that it's not an images are not taken of every car that goes through a work zone. Is that that is my understanding? That's my understanding. Okay. Well, well, that was when in the last testimony of when that vendor, a potential vendor, the person that provided that service, they're talking about parking that van kind of thing out there and having recording equipment. Does it only trigger on? And that, over that's, that's what I'm getting at is what I when I heard there was not just an image, it was a, in effect a video stream of them passing through. Um, and that would be available out there for 12 months. I'm really am just trying to get at the real sure. privacy portion of the, the general public's what right did they have to know where I happen to have traveled 12 months ago or 11 months ago. That's I just want to try to yeah, that sounded that. like that was an extra package. So if you wanted to be clear, well, well saying it's part of this package or thing that they're gonna I'm really I'm the edge of privacy and whatnot. I want to really understand that. That the testimony that we received, because I asked the question actually, like is I believe I was the one who asked the question, was like, is it only recorded when somebody is exceeding the speed limit? And the answer was yes. Um, and I think it's an excellent question. I think the questions that you're asking, Representative Walker, are, are like privacy is there's a there are concerns around privacy. So it's really good that we're certain. And then we could, and it is, we could, do we need to be more directed? Well, I thought my testimony, I don't know, it was, was wish washy, but he said it all depends on what you pay for. It's like a subscription. Well, mm -hmm. What do you want to sign up for? So should we just eliminate that from the menu of options, the video part? Well, how do we, what I heard that part, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Said, I, yeah. I didn't understand what was for sure so, being recorded that may not or may not, but if it gets out, if it's out there, then somebody can get at it through here or whatnot. If you're, speeding, if you're speeding in the work zone, yes, right? I mean, I think that like it's- And then everything around that video that it captured and whatnot. Those are the, only, just to be really clear, yeah, this is absolutely. very specific on the back of a license plate. It is really narrow. It's like not like, you know, I, I don't- that, I don't think we're taking the, there's not video taking of the, well, the, the larger. In that, maybe in that, I got thrown off by the idea of the video out of the back of the van and the way that it was recording the vehicle passing through the, the portion of the. the I'll, I'll tell you, you may not have been here. I don't. We, that's why I, I, I if you were here with ACLU is really concerned about that kind of surveillance. Mm -hmm. And like, and it was, this is very specifically about the rear license plate. It's not. I, I want to make yeah, I'll just refer to, not always. to the recorded image definition as well, which yeah. outlines that it means a photograph, micro photograph, electronic image or electronic video that shows clearly enough to identify the rear registration plate, the number plate of a motor vehicle that has activated the radar component of the ATLE system by traveling past the system at more than 10 miles above the speed. Is that, is that yeah, and, and it, yes, that does my so that would just the concern of 
making sure of understanding of how that equipment worked that somehow they're not doing any more than what that specifically says is what I guess is that that yeah. where it goes to and that is the management of the out there because other people are like I want to let him management of that vendor the management of that process that it's clear enough that 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 is um there's a control factor of significance that that really makes that that happen so that's my concern the way the equipment was designed it seemed I wouldn't want it to be doing any more than what it was legally required to do well this is the yeah. law that we would be passing so I think it would yes but that as long as the equipment actually just had it doesn't do more than that then they would be breaking the law so how does that you know it just kind of if the data is out there of more than what it has to be somebody's going to get at it in a way that's what I expect it is a possibility so I appreciate the indulgence on you know, the concern for privacy and not necessarily just standing the entire testimony. For a couple of other questions, I wanted to have lunch counsel. I see, I see the people who have their hands up. You can put your hands down. I, I got you, but I need to let um, our. Let yeah, them. but and and you know, I'm not the expert on how the technology itself works, but this is what needs to be recorded. And as long as it's pursuant to that legitimate law enforcement purpose definition, that's the only way that it could be obtained. Um, if it was obtained at, outside of that for some reason, it, it, it's it's against the law. But it's really it is as the committee and as Chair Coffee said, this is a very intentional narrowing of the information and then who stores it and for what purpose it could be used subsequently. So um, that can be tweaked if if need be, but it's really confined to the investigation, detection, and enforcement of crimes or commercial motor vehicle violations. And that we're the defense that thereof. Yeah, to stay within the law, they cannot be recording or doing any more than what that specifically says. And our process will make sure in the review for the agency managing it that they that that's understood. I, that's what I'm trying to emphasize upon, I guess, or really make sure that I understand and push into that privacy issue. And I appreciate your indulgence it's into that. <laughs> it's, the, it's a really important part of this bill. So that's why it's good to take some time to talk about it. And if you're all set, I want to thank you. You're all set? Okay, Representative Shaw. So Ben, I'm wondering, are we using an AOPR system or an ATLE system? Well, they are they are different systems. They are different systems. Yes. And the, the laws are different. This the, was creating we're creating a law for ATLE systems. There's currently already a law for AOPR. Right. So when I go to the definitions mm -hmm. uh, and representative Walker, they need me to that definition. Thanks. So we <laughs> the reading again. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> people can get confused when you read this. Uh, in, in, uh, on page two, down on line nine, we're talking about an AOPR system. Yes. And then down on page on line 13, we're talking about an ATLE system. Then we skip down to line 20. We're talking about collecting data for an ALPR system is stored on the statewide automatic law enforcement server operated by da 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 da, da operated by everybody or operated by the Department of Public Safety. That's a sticking point on this bill of the public safety. They do not want to be involved with this basically at all. With the ALPR side? With any, they any of it. involved with this bill at all. So we're not using. We, we are not using currently saving of historic data on these ALPR system, storing it on a statewide automatic law enforcement server operated by X, Y, and Z, the vendor storing all the data. Right. Do I have that right? And initially. initially. Yeah. Okay. And yes. They, they retain it, and then we'll get into like preservation and, and right. things like that beyond that initial. 12 month or adjudication crime span. And if, if, if they get to that point, that all goes away. Yes. All that storage goes away. Unless there's an extension under the. I don't know. Because there are other provisions that do allow for extensions of the retain, retention of the information. We're trying to figure out a way to get public safety out of the bill as much as possible. And, and by having this, having this language starting. Okay, I'm on page, page two, line 20, in front of the five. Is that, I'm not sure what that's saying, but now we're, 
turning the whole thing over to the Department of Public Safety and they don't like that. Well, there's active and historical data. Right. So active data is distinct um, and it's uploaded data to individual ALPR system units before operation as well as data gathered during the operation of the system. So the way, um, and then any data collected by the system in accordance with 1607 of this chapter shall be collected. We can get into 1607. So, so with that, is an ATLE and a and ALPR system. Is it? It is. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Oh, I mean, they're defined differently. Yeah. So I think the way to think of it is that it's different data sets. But the way that this bill is structured is that they're all housed in one database. So different data sets that have the same home, if you will. And that, and, you know, you can talk about, it says here that, um, you know, on that statewide automatic law, automated law enforcement server um, operated by, um, and that's one of, um, and that's why some of these changes needed to be made. I'm actually trying to find the specific. I'm not trying to blow the bill up or anything. Yeah. I'm trying to fix it so that the bill passes. Right. I mean, I think that's really the good way, a good way to think about it, though. Two different data sets that are stored in the same database. Um, but based on what you're telling me you now, DPS doesn't want to be responsible for that's that. That's the moment we're in <laughs> Well, that's ultimately a policy decision for the committee about who houses the data. So would we, I'm sorry about being a hard head about this, but so would we be collecting historical data that I think it's sort of that it's, it's, it's a long time away and the immediate, the active data is what we're sending tickets on. And then once the ticket is resolved, that active data is disappears. Is that the way do I have that anywhere near correct? That's my understanding as well. Yeah. So how much data do we think would be going into the historical data piece? That's not a lot. I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think either, but I, I can't. Thinking does get your right. So right. can we fix it? I mean, can we maybe not at this late date, maybe not. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I know this kind of, this might feel like kicking the can, but I think it's ultimately who you would like to house that data if, if it's not DPS, and that's a policy. And we want to, I mean, we did have a, and this might not be exactly on point, but we, we there, when we ask, you guys judge say the question, you know, like we don't want to have, um, Third party vendor based in Indiana issuing tickets, like verifying, you know, yeah. there is a role for the Department of Public Safety. Mm -hmm. And in my humble opinion, this is their job. Like highway safety is part of the job for the Department of Public Safety. But I do think the issue about data storage, you know, I think it could be interesting to find out what the state of Connecticut did with, you know, because we this this legislation is kind of modeled on their pilot and it might be worth getting into those those details a little bit right sure. um and we're also the legislature so we can if we think it's that that the that it is appropriate that the department of public safety and uh stores this data and that's a decision for this committee to make correct you know yeah. but, and you know we have some pretty uh, we have some laws on the books about how that data is managed so that the, these privacy concerns are are um, addressed. Like it's very narrow and, and, and specific about how how law enforcement can use this data. So, you know, if we were to decide, to decide like that there's another entity, we don't necessarily have the same I would ask you. Like, yeah, I mean, and well, I, I don't know if this would be helpful for the committee, but you know, when you get just any traffic violation, I mean, the way it plays out, I mean, and it's really any crime too, is that you've got the complaint, um, but every single one 
is accompanied by an affidavit of law enforcement officer. Um, I think that there would be some practical impediments to having it be somebody else to provide those complaints. Um, you know, just how would you logistically do that? Um, and because right now the enforcement of our crimes is a police power. Um, and they're the ones that the legislature historically have chosen to enforce that. And they're the ones that initiate those, those, those complaints and supported by a statement to make sure that it's not just frivolous. It's, you're, you're, it's, it's supported by, by an oath. Um, how that would be affected by either putting those responsibilities on a third party or I know in the Senate, there was some discussion with the courts to do it or a court clerk and, that impugns sort of the independence of the courts if you have clerk staff starting to issue complaints and sworn affidavits. And so, um, again, while it's a policy decision, and the, the legislature can do really whatever it wants. Um, there might be some consequences that would have to be addressed um, assigning it elsewhere. Um, and I'd have to look a little bit more into the like what all of those consequences would be. So. Is this, is this about, the, about this topic? Yeah, go ahead, Representative. Uh, thank you. Um, so I think some of this confusion comes from the a ALPR system sort of tied into this bill, which has nothing to do with ALPRs. It is the, and, and so if you look at the definition of ATLE, it says image of the license plate, real registration. And then, you know, on five, it says, hey, historical data of L ALPRs. Doesn't say anything right. about the Utility. ATLE. And you know, perhaps it should say the historical data until it's supposed to run out. Right. Uh, should be stored in their system, which was designed for that. Are you let me just but there is language that in the bill on page two that links um, ATLE with ALPR. It's I, I, I want to let our attorney walk us yeah. through that because I'm, I'm looking on page two and I, I Ben, I want you to chime in here because you're the attorney. <laughs> but it says, you know, active data, then starting on line, then to let them line six, any data collected by an ALPR system in accordance with section 1607. Section 1607 is about, you know, it's it's saying, I mean, it's linking these two things. Am I am I mistaken? Yeah, I mean, maybe it's helpful to go through sixteen oh seven. Yeah, I, that's because I have it up on my laptop. I'm looking at sections, and it might yeah. be helpful to see. Um, do we want to go through the review process and annual report before we get to sixteen oh seven, just to stay and see whether we want to just jump ahead? You can just jump ahead. Um, I think I, I, I defer to you a little bit on this. Let's just let's just jump ahead. Okay. Um, um, I'm finding the page because one is. You know, I'm just bearing with me one moment while I grab my my note because okay. I have a lot of this is affected by the effective dates sure. and certain sections going into effect and others not. So I'm going to use my cheat sheet. Um, what in in what page are you on? Um, where, well, that's gonna it's gonna inform. Sixteen oh seven. Sixteen oh seven. So starts on page twelve, but mo much of it is is struck. So really, the the operative provisions um, start on page fourteen. Um, but basically, the bill amends sixteen oh seven by repealing those definitions. They moved them to what we just went over. Um, and clarifies the amendments of the remainder of the statute to conform with the new 1606 provisions, which is the ATLE system, and changes the requirement for rulemaking. So we'll just go through it step by step. The operation, Vermont law enforcement officers certified in ALPR by the Criminal Justice Council, use in data access and confidentiality, ALPR equipment is intended to provide access to law enforcement reports of one or stolen vehicles and wanted persons to further other legitimate law enforcement purposes. This language is, is pretty similar to the ATLE. 
use of LP, ALPR systems by law enforcement officers and access to active data are restricted to legitimate law enforcement purposes. Active data may be accessed by a law enforcement officer operating the ALPR system only if the law enforcement officer has that legitimate law enforcement purpose. Um, entry of, the, of any data into the system other than the data collected by the ALPR system must be approved by a supervisor and have a legitimate law enforcement purpose. So that could in theory include the ATLR, ATLE <laughs> system information. Um, then there's requests to access that data. Again, in writing, they need to include the name. They need to have that sort of specific and articulable facts as the basis showing that there are reasonable grounds to believe that the data is relevant and material to an ongoing criminal missing person or commercial motor vehicle violation investigation or enforcement. Um, in each department, access to the active data is limited to designated personnel who have been approved, provided account access by the department to conduct ALPR store data queries. Um, and again, even that data is further restricted to data collected within the past seven days. Then the Vermont Inf uh, Intelligence Center analysts shall transmit historical data only to a Vermont or out-of-state law enforcement officer or person who has that legitimate law enforcement purpose. A law enforcement officer or other person to whom historical data are transmitted may use such data only for the legitimate law enforcement purpose. Um, and then entry of any data onto the automated traffic law enforcement storage system. So again, you'll see the change here from ALPR server to just this automated storage system, which would house both. Um, so that's why there's sort of, you're seeing the distinction between a ALPR and TLE as far as how it can be accessed and used in this portion. Um, request for historical data within six months after the date of the creation, um, whether from Vermont or out of state law enforcement must be made in writing to a VIC analyst. The request must include again, their name, um, the agency of the requester, um, and then their ORI number must provide that specific and articulable factual basis for reasonable grounds to believe that the data is relevant to those legitimate law enforcement purposes. And then VIC also is mandated to retain all requests and shall record in writing the outcome of the request and any information that was provided. Um, and then they shall retain that information for at least three years. Um, after six months from the creation, VAC may only disclose historical data pursuant to a warrant um, if the data is not sought in connection with a pending criminal charge or to the prosecution or the defense in connection with a pending criminal charge and pursuant to a court order issued upon a finding that the data are reasonably likely to be relevant to the criminal matter. Um, and then it outlines that active and historical data is not subject to subpoena or discovery um, in a private civil action. So that was sort of the difference between the divorce action and one for an actual prosecution of a criminal offense. Um, and then notwithstanding any contrary provisions um, of subdivision two in connection with motor vehicle screening, inspection and compliance activities to enforce uh, the federal uh, safety regulations. Um, the DMV may maintain or designate a server for the storage of that historical data that is separate um, from the automated traffic law enforcement storage system. So there's, there's a segregation there. Um, they may also designate a specific employee to carry out the responsibilities um, as a VIC analyst and supervisor as specified um, in the previous subdivision um, shall have the same duties as the VIC with respect to those retention requests. Um, so any questions on that? I mean, there is a structure where the, the database for the two data sets is the same, but how to access that information is a little bit different um, and is really specific when it comes to ALPR. So, and if folks are understanding, right, that we are like the underlining here, the underlined sections, we are updating statute, right? So, it, so you can see, you look it up through our, uh, you can look it up and you can see what, how it is currently in the underlined sections or the update. Because sometimes underlined reflect, underlined language sometimes reflects something else, like it's a change from the sentence, the sentence but that's not what that is in this. Right, this case. is this an update is to the law itself. Yes. 
So does that help clarify things for the committee um, of how it doesn't help we because get... acronyms are really close to each other, right? Like ALPR and ATLE. Um, but this is an important piece. So questions for Ben for clarification. Do we want to finish just going through because 1608 is the preservation of the yeah, do that. It's all kind of connected to retention. So we can have some, some, and then I think then there'll be some questions. So um, now we're getting into the retention of the ALPR info, our data. Um, so sent to DPS and ret retained pursuant to the subdivision requirements of subdivision two. Again, DPS must maintain it on that single database. Um, so except as provided and in section 1608, information gathered by law enforcement through the use of the ALPR system is retained for only 18 months um, after the data was obtained when the permitted 18 month period has expired, DPS and any local law enforcement agency with custody information must destroy it and destroy any copies or backups. Um, it may be retained uh, beyond that 18 month period pursuant to a preservation request made or disclosure order issued under section 1608 of, the type of, of this title. So that's really the extension of that initial retention period. It's the only way that can be done is through how 1608 um, outlines it um, or to a warrant pursuant to rule 41 um, of the Vermont or federal rules of criminal procedure. But again, according to that criminal investigation, prosecution enforcement, um, there's oversight and rulemaking. I'm gonna skip that for now. Um, And just get to preservation. Um, so the preservation request, so this would be on page 20 of draft 1.2. And, and again, um, the preservation is really, it's, it doesn't make a lot of, it really only makes minor, minor non-substantive changes. So you'll see here the references to statute uh, or subdivision and subchapter. But again, the general scheme is that Law enforcement agency or the DMV or someone else with a legitimate law enforcement purpose may apply to the criminal court for an extension of up to 90 days. So three more months beyond that 18 month period. Um, if the agency or department offers those specific and articulable facts showing that there are reasonable grounds that the, that, uh, the captured plate data are relevant material to that ongoing criminal or missing persons investigations or to a pending court or judicial bureau proceeding involving that uh, enforcement of a crime or a commercial motor vehicle violation. Um, a request for additional 90 day extensions or for longer periods may be made to the Superior Court as well, and it's subject to the same standards um, applicable for that initial request. Um, it, the, there needs to be an affidavit accompanying it, stating the particular camera, the data and the date and times for which the data was, uh, must be preserved. And then destruction. Captured plate data shall be destroyed on the schedule specified in 1607, which we've gone through, um, if the preservation request is denied or 14 days after the denial, whichever is later. So this scheme remains unchanged with the exception of some cross-references and, you know, really cross-references, um, but substantively it remains the same as it is under current law. This is a good time for questions from this committee. I think we got through that. So, Representative Walker, you had had your hand up. I don't know if you still. Um, <laughs> I, I want to put in five. No, I, I, well, I, I do have a couple of questions, but I want to. Make, I'm not sure if I have them all lined up the best way possible. But when you were reading from the, I'll try the sections that talk about any data to be re retained, et cetera. By the previous parts in the definition, it's only events that are 10 miles per hour or over that can possibly get into there. So yes. when we say any data retained by previously up further in the law, exactly. the only data that will at all be available of any store is a trigger 10 plus miles per hour or over. Yes. Is that, which makes, so when I read the part, it says the data, it, I need to translate that to saying only triggered events. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then we, then have that reviewed by a law enforcement person, and they decide to issue a, a, a 
of a, a flat leash right. notice for the, the fine. Mm -hmm. If they choose not to, does that one then get destroyed or does that one get returned? Uh, re does that one get uh, retained for the 12 months? It would probably be retained for the 12 months in that circumstance because there is no enforcement action at that point. And it, so it still fits the criteria of the over 10 miles per hour, but it, he chose, he or she, the, the law enforcement person chose not to issue a violation, but it would stay in the retained yes. data. Okay, so um, that's, I guess, part of the, the, and then the part that I was pushing at earlier is as an example on page three, where it does reference electronic video in the, in the bill, and not on this, in the, that portion, but on the bill, mm -hmm. electronic video. And I did go back to my notes on the, the, in terms of the vendor piece, there's a reference to the video. And then in the Connecticut piece, information captured from each event, video, video images and data. And that's probably where I'm getting a little bit hung up on this idea that there's potential of some video out there being captured by these machines or whatever you would call them. These, um, that's probably where my privacy concerns are really getting caught up. But this makes me feel a lot better if I can, instead of reading what it says, read it and translate it saying only be triggered yeah. 10 miles per hour. Yeah, it's, it's I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. My remaining uncomfortableness comes from the reference of electronic video that implies to me something more than the image of just that license plate piece. So I appreciate your details and patience. So I feel better about part of it. That's why I'm here. I, I'm still concerned <laughs> about the consistent reference to um, videos and optional videos and in the presentation piece there. But I really makes the, the agency's portion of the concept of operations and the field operations protocols really important in terms of that. So thank you for answering my question. Thank you for digging into it a little bit further. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that I, I, I'm still not comfortable about the video portion of it, but I feel much better about what we're retaining. Right, and just, I think it's helpful to, you know, we did get testimony from a vendor who does this. I mean, our the language in this bill would be the language that would guide the work, the package that we would um, develop with the vendor, you know. And so, are there things that would stored images of photograph, micro photograph, electronic image, or electro electronic video that shows clearly enough to identify the rear registration plate number of a motor vehicle that has activated the radar component of an ATLE system by traveling past the ATL system at more than 10 miles above the speed limit? That's the I mean, that, that would be the place to... Right. Because the suite of services offered in, by the testimony of the okay. bear mobility, we, we don't want all of them. Well, it's not specific to Vermont. Right. I mean, that's just yes, like things right. that they do, and right? Then when I have the Connecticut portion specifically referencing video images. So we don't want all of their capable. We want that concept of operations to be as limited as what we're getting at. So. Representative Kimball? Yes, I mean, I think that point makes a lot of sense uh, in, the, in, the, in, in the sense that <clears throat> how is it possible to have a video that doesn't include more than just a license plate? I guess it's I guess it's, it's what I'm trying to understand. In the point that you're making. Right. What, what, is, what, is, what I said about that, how, I, I, I think what I'm hearing from your point is how is it possible to have a video, which is a motion, you know, motion picture, uh, that is only a license plate? And if that's, yeah, I, that is part of what I'm getting at. I, I really want workplace safety, as I'm sure everybody does. Yeah. I'm concerned about yeah. video of our citizens right. and right. any retention of anything that might place them at places that so it's only the triggered piece. And I'm I'm very concerned about the management of the, the POS. That's all. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, not intentionally trying to be difficult. I really want to make sure that um, no. the privacy piece is um, that they have a, citizens have a right to go wherever they want to go without any monitoring at any yeah. time and any record of where they went unless they broke the law or unless they put workers in danger. That's different. I'm okay with that, right? But it, that's, is that, that's what I'm trying yeah. to get at. Right, right. No, I, I get it. But so at least in my question, which is if we, if we didn't, if we deleted the reference to a video, if we just said only still photographs, would that somehow hamper this? I think it would. I think we heard in the testimony, like to just take a still image without movement, I think it does hamper the ability to verify if that person was 
feeding. I mean, it's, I think yeah. that's my understanding. That, that we heard that? Okay. I, that's I what I understood, that. but okay. Representative Pudge? Two items, thank you. Um, one is that I think we, we don't really understand the technology because I can't believe when you're driving and getting tolls that they're not continually taking a picture, but then I'm guessing, and I don't know it, but I'm guessing the software just sort of says, there it is, there it is, I got these license plates. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, you know, we don't, I'm guessing that's how the technology works. But, and we would want to ensure that there is no video we um, kept you know, stored and not only that. So that was my first understanding of how it works. My second one is I'm, I'm now a, a bit more confused on, you know, where the license plate reader, uh, it's been, pushed aside and and then how they how it's sunsetting or not sunsetting just you know and and whatever happened to them i mean because i think we're going to get a lot of questions that are associated with those and you know i'm not quite sure we had testimony and we have a report from 2021 and that was the last time that they were used but that's the testimony that captain Loan, correct. Loan gave up, gave, and there's, and you receive. You, we have it on our committee page. Those, those reports that you can read. I mean, that's I think what you can see that they're not being used. If that's if I'm understanding your question. Right. Well, my, so my question is, um, why aren't they being used? What's stopping I mean, this from the data and everything? They had the, the compliance to, to operate them. It wasn't worth the time, so we're not using them. Basically. Because we made it really narrow, the oh, yeah. no, no, the yeah. assembly made it really narrow, so that the, this this information was not just like out there that people like because of privacy right. concerns, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, right. it was before my time, but that's what that is what yeah. I believe. So I mean, there's nothing stopping them from trying to do it within those restrictions. Exactly. Yes, yes. but they won't. They made it clear that they're yeah. not going to go through those hurdles. Yes. So. Not do it. Um, <laughs> And at the, and we are choosing to keep all that still in state statute, even though yeah, nobody really has, has any plans to use it. Well, oh, well, and now it's just tied to this. Serious gymnastics. They that was the last place that they were using, but but I don't think they were being used. Yeah. I, I don't know how relevant that is to be on it. I mean, I think when we hear that they just decide that they have other ways to do it, you know, we, you know, they're not using it. That's what we know, that, but that's, that's the answer. But they've, that they've chosen not to do it. They can do it, but there's narrow provisions. And I would, is that, yeah. that's, that's what we know. And that's the answer, you know. Okay. I think, but, well, you know, I think it just gets, it's sort of hanging out there and it's getting mixed up with this and then therefore mm -hmm. makes it that much you know harder to to understand and explain the purpose of this versus that so is it fair to say currently like a local a town's lot local um police department could use this technology to uh if they if they wanted to like to LPR. yeah yes they could use it so sometimes we're hearing like, well, towns want permission to do it. They have it, but there's requirements about what they have to do there's, yeah. with, with uh, and some of them are deciding after trying it that it's too onerous. It's just, yeah, too, too onerous, too promising. But I don't think that's the same as what we're being asking them to do here. This is how the third party vendor, we got yeah. testimony of like, that how to alleviate the, the third party vendor can alleviate the administrative burden piece of it. You know, that's what, mm -hmm. um, and I, no, I get, I get that. It just, yeah. it, it makes it mess. I think in my, you know, trying to keep the two separation between the two purposes and how they work. What are you clear on how they work? Or you yes. to, okay, no, no. I just want to make sure the committee needs like this is it's good to have this discussion among the committee because this are, these are questions that we uh, our colleagues will ask also. Yeah, I, and my point being is if we just wrote a bill just for this, it would be a be a lot simpler and and uh, and not as messy. I don't think I think there are some people in this building who would never support that though. <laughs> <laughs> 
because I think there's a reason why there's some really narrow uses yeah. of this technology. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's that's yeah. that's the reality. So more questions for Ben. This is this we got him here as a represent job. Sure. Good. For the next we do need a 1605 definition section entirely because if you have to steal that section later on the bill mm -hmm. in section six. Right. And the only language I think we retain is the definition of what an ALPR is and what an APLD is, which so they're two entirely separate systems. Right. And the reason why is that when you get to the bottom of the bill, there's 1609 that prohibits the use of those two sy systems. And that's why there's the, the definition of those sections that makes sense. So it's all, yeah, there's 1609 here. So if federal funding wasn't received and everything went, didn't go into effect, essentially 1609 would occur. And that's why those two definitions are retained in 1605 because they're referenced in 1609 and the prohibition. Pretty confusing. The whole bill pretty confusing because we, at one point we intertwined two and at another point we separate them. It's, it's tough to follow the lines, um, but it's also sort of elegant in a way because it preserves certain areas of the law from having to be amended if they don't, if other sections don't go into effect. I mean, I, I really have to credit Anthea on this. I mean, the level of thought that she put in and sort of the springing of certain provisions when there's funding or not, she did an excellent job at really making the mechanics of it work so there wouldn't have to be later legislation or subsequent does. How do we uh, not stand? If we get the money, we have to who's get the money. Uh, the prohibition goes away. How do we make the prohibition within the bill? Well, the prohibition wouldn't go into effect if the money was received. Is if, this... the money, if the money would, yes, that, that's that's. I'm gonna yeah. Ben yeah. shared this with the committee, yeah. um, and it's a really handy dandy chart. And I think it's under Ben's name on our committee page. I don't recall. The date it was sent out, but for those of you who work with paper, you got a printed copy of this as well. There's my paper. Right, but I'm not sure if that's. Yeah, it was a little bit before I submitted it to the. It was the first hearing on this bill. Right. So, our folks. Yeah, that's it. I think this is really helpful in understanding that I mean, to kind of go into the questions about the repeal that you're asking about into yeah. the committee, right? Yeah. So, um, Representative Shaw, I'm happy to maybe kind of sit down with you if you want, and we can kind of go through this um, at another yeah, time. Or I'm, I'm I'm happy to do that. Yeah. And I think it might be helpful. I think I think uh, maybe we should have So, but on that specific point about 1609, so if federal funding is received. 1609 is added on July 1st, 2027. If it's not received, it's added on July 2nd, 2025. Because in the way that would, you know, so if the funding is received, it extends the life of those programs for the, you know, it's that two year or what's it, 18 month pilot. Um, and then ultimately both are prohibited after that time. If it's not received, the prohibition occurs earlier because there'd be really no functional need for it. Does the committee understand that tracking that like because some of this like was set to sunset yes. this July 1, 2024. And so by us, if this, you know, this this bill would need to extend, you know, extend the sunset. If we get funding, it's extended <laughs> further out. And if not, it's and 1607 and 1608 are those prospective repeals or sunsets um, under current law that would, without this bill, would occur on July 1st of this year. With this bill, it's repealed 
um, and remains in statute um, until 2027 if the federal funding is received um, or they are repealed um, July 2nd, 2025 if the federal funding is not received. So it's, it's not easy to follow, but it's really, again, I'm gonna use the word elegant, how, how it interacts with each other, but it's not easy to follow. This is a great little cheat sheet. I think it helps understand. Look up it up. Our committee page under Ben's name. I could. I could. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, I didn't find it either. All right. Yeah. Um. Well, I can. I can email it around after the committee uh, hearing again, um, if you'd like. And it should be in your email. We're pretty sure we sent it to either Jamie or I think it's you. Um. If we reach the end, that's, that's, I want to make sure that we got to do our walkthrough and then um, Michelle Blumhauer came in. We have a couple of quick questions about AOT language that we might be able to resolve. But I want to make sure that we got through. Yeah. Got through. Um, I mean, unless, oops. Here, let's see. Um, yeah, unless there are other portions about the outreach. Um, and all that could be, I, I skipped over that to kind of get to the preservation. Sure, why don't we just look at that language real quick. Um, we, we did leapfrog over that to get to some of these. That's on page 23. Um, well, we, we, we skipped over the review process and annual report on page 11. Um, if you want to go back over that. Yeah, let's do that real quick. Okay, so AOT in consultation with DPF, DPS establishes the review process to ensure that they're only used for the purposes um, permitted in the section. Um, DPS shall report the results of this review annually on or before January 15th to Senate and House Committees on Judiciary and on Transportation. Um, does that want to... Did the committee want to change DPS, the reference there, um, to AOT, AOT, excuse me? I do. Yes, I think so, right? I mean, if AOT is kind of, I mean, we started to change it in other places, right? Okay. So. Sorry, um, it's on page 11. Oh, sorry. Page 11 of draft 1.2. Do you need a copy, Michelle? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Do we, have, do we have another copy? I think we made. I think we made a copy actually. But... It's okay. So... Thank you. Um. So making that change would be the agency that would report the results um, to the committees of jurisdiction. Um, the report contains, uh, based on prior calendar year data, total number of units being operated on behalf of the agency, the terms of any contracts entered into with the vendors, all the locations where the systems were deployed, along with the dates and hours that they were in operation, the number of violations issued based on those recorded images, and the outcomes of the violations by category, including first, second, third, and um, subsequent violations, and uh, the contested ones as well. The number of recorded images the agency submitted to um, the automated traffic law enforcement storage system, so the now single storage system for both data sets. The total amount paid in civil penalties and any recommended changes for the use of the ATLE systems in Vermont. And then notwithstanding to VSA 20D, which is sort of the five year sunset of all reports. So this lasts beyond that. Um, the annual report required under the section shall continue if an ATLE system is deployed in the state unless there's action taken otherwise by the legislature. Well, that report is currently done by the Department of Public Safety, right? So, um, in the current language, it would be right now, um, yes, DPS would report it, um, and I have made the change that it would be the agency to report it. That might be, I'm just looking over to Michelle. Yeah, I think I think that would be fine um, because we will be managing all that sort of analytics related to the pilot, and um, I think this would be overly burdensome for DPS to uh, administer given 
sort of all the elements and how the elements relate to the pilot. Um, you know, I think what will happen is once we better understand how through the pilot, how a deployment of this nature would move forward within the state resource pool, uh, employees, um, departments, availability for, for deploying a program. There may be some elements that we have assigned to AOT currently in this bill that would be, we would recommend go somewhere else. After the pilot. Like, After the pilot. The pilot would, would, would kind of inform, would inform that. Um, I did have one question, though, in this section that you just went over um, related to the rulemaking that we yeah. have at the very yeah. end of that section. Yeah, but I think that was something I wanted to talk I, about. Um, I would recommend against putting anything related to rulemaking yeah. in here because that could just be something that will take this uh, effort off track. I think that was something that came up when the committee was walking through this last time, a question that I... I don't know if we had a lot of discussion about it, but I heard it from committee members also, like, um, because if we're kind of changing the, like, putting AOT is kind of the lead on this project rather than the Department of Public Safety, this doesn't, doesn't yeah, really make sense. And I think for a pilot of the magnitude we have here, which is pretty small, um, I could see that we may want rulemaking when we actually set up a program. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, but at this point, I don't know that it would be beneficial to define one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, other folks on board with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to highlight that this is the way it's phrased. It's discretionary. It's not required. It's may adopt rules, um, but it's a policy decision about keeping it in altogether. So I have to say, because the testimony that we've got from the Department of Public Safety, like, you know, they, I think what we started to hear is that they'd rather be consulted, but not the lead. Like, on, I think this makes sense. From the, the committee, we in hearing that AOT also feels the same way. I think that makes sense. Okay. The strike subsection M. Yeah, please. Yeah. And, and Michelle, maybe before Ben, please, we have a couple, we, we can maybe take it offline, to, but just about the, there were a couple of like little in earlier sections about making sure that some of the language, I, I've, I have it flagged. Yeah, I still haven't had the chance to yeah, review everything. So, Sorry. Just, but I know, I'm imagining, Ben, you're running to the, your next committee. Uh, three o'clock. Uh, so maybe we're, we're scheduled to take a break and maybe we can just look at some of that language okay. that flag. So just one more comment. Sure. On, you know, while, while we're here on the limitations, I think this should maybe relieve some of Representative Walker's concerns. Because it says this this system shall only report only report violations, shall not be used for any other surveillance purposes. And then two talks about uh, can only use recorded images for if a violation was committed in the prior 12 months. I don't know how that ties with the ALPR. It, it, so they're on different retention schedules. Right. ALPR is 18 months, and then can you can have those extensions. This is just 12. So I think this is great. I mean, it's been a good 90 minutes working with you on this. I think there are a couple of more changes. I also, just for the committee, I I believe, my understanding is that House Judiciary is going to be taking a look at the, the sections of this bill that re relate to the Judicial Bureau. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I think we, on our agenda, we have that we might possibly vote on this tomorrow, but I think in all likelihood, we're going to need to delay that just to have some more committee discussion with you. Like tomorrow, but we'll, we'll have you in tomorrow just to kind of try to wrap things up a little bit more. You want me to have, a, you know, pending the discussion for the next half an hour, um, an edited version ready to be voted off on just in case for tomorrow afternoon? If we could try to do that, we'll, sure. we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, Let's 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 see where we are, but let's try. We can always try. Okay. <laughs> we, might, we might need to just make sure. Just want to make sure that we have room for um, if the House Judiciary Committee has any concerns. So we'll keep. We can. How's that sound? Okay. Um, okay, committee. Great. Um, we're gonna we're scheduled to take a break, which I'd like to do. We're back in here at two forty-five. So with that, we can.